What's going on, everybody? Bosquez here with a different kind of video than what we're used to seeing so far here on this channel. This that you're about to see is just a excerpt from my more recent stream on Twitch. One of my viewers had asked me on my thoughts regarding the Destiny 2 Lightfall expansion. This is just my thoughts at the time. I do want to say that this is not all my thoughts. This is not my formalized thoughts. This was just what I could think of on the spot regarding Lightfall. For those who are enjoying the expansion, don't let my thoughts or anybody else's thoughts take away from your enjoyment. And for anybody who's not enjoying it, well, hopefully you Anything that we get in the future uh, is better than what we've seen so far. Hopefully, that's what happens. That's what I think most of us would like, anyways. So anyways, uh, that's pretty much it. If you want to catch me live, you can catch me over on twitch.tv forward slash bossquest. That's where all the live action happens. Uh, but beyond that, thanks for uh, watching the video. Ooh, how am I liking the expansion? That is a great question. I will tell you, I am, uh, whelmed, <laughs> whelmed. I think whelmed is the best way to describe it. I am not overwhelmed. I am not underwhelmed. I am just whelmed. Uh, <clears throat> the expansion exists. Uh, <laughs> like. Um, I think, so, like, I'll be honest, I'll be honest. Last Tuesday, well, sorry, Wednesday, Wednesday, I beat the campaign Wednesday. Yeah, bar doesn't have anything. Any hollow protector business going on? Um, I beat <clears throat> the campaign last Wednesday. And I will tell you that after the campaign on Wednesday, I was immediately like disappointed with the campaign and I think the thing is the thing about the thing about Lightfall so like you know we just got Lightfall the expansion here in Destiny 2 and like we were all hyped and not only were we hyped but then Bungie does what Bungie does. They hit you with those trailers. And like the last trailer, the launch trailer, the launch trailer got me hyped because they had a dope song in there that gets you really hyped up. Because at the very end, like the 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 singer, <clears throat> she she sings, this is what you get when you mess with us. And like, it's like, yeah, that's right. You get pumped up. You're excited. It's a Bungie did it again. Bungie made me drink that Bungie juice. And I was like, let's go! Like, you know, insert the kid who's just like on the basketball court, just like jumping around like, let's go! Let's go! Like, I was like, I was hyped. And so like, on this past Tuesday was the most excited I was for Destiny in a long time. And then this past Wednesday was the most disappointed I have been in Destiny in a long time. Like, <laughs> it's, the, it's the, it's the, it's the contrast. It's the, <laughs> the duality of man. <laughs> uh, the, the campaign sucks. The first few stories <laughs> the first few stories, uh, first few missions, um, the first few missions I, I, I felt were really good. But then, and you know, a lot of other people talked about this too. Um, the first few missions were really good, but then you have the rocky training moment, you know, the 80s, like, cutscene where you're just, like, working out with Osiris, working out on your new ability, your strand ability, you know, like... You know, it's ba da ba, ba da ba. Like you're just like doing your thing, and like I'm like, why do we need this training montage? Why is this here? And, and then the ending 
sucks. Like, um, spoiler alert. I'm going to give you like 15 seconds to mute me or actually no, don't mute me. You got to hop off. I forgot. I have closed captions. <laughs> you got, you got 15 seconds to like get out of here because I'm about to hit you with some spoilies, some spoiler alerts right now. We good? You kill Callus at the end of the campaign. We're talking about the original Destiny 2 raid boss, who you could never kill. The original Destiny 2 raid boss you could never kill because you were killing robot machines that were made in his likeness. He was so elusive. And so I thought, like, oh, now, not only is he elusive like he used to be, but now he has powers from the witness powers from the darkness and so he's going to be something more and so i expected to fight him in the campaign but i expected that he would still be elusive to the point that he would back off disappear like i expected us to like fight him maybe a couple of times between now and leading up to the DLC next year for the final shape. Cause he was elusive for the first raid. So, and then like we, he kept like, you know, being in the picture, but far enough that we couldn't touch him. And like, okay, maybe we do kill him because we have killed hive gods. We have killed, you know, anomalies unknown to man before. So we do kill him. But even then, like the final boss fight, was very meh, like, again, going back to the raid, there were some cool raid mechanics back in the beginning of Destiny 2. He had some cool stuff going on. And then here, after, you know, being blessed by the witness, chosen by the witness, like, he has a gun that shoots things. And that's it. And then he... Brings out two swords, and then he just chases you around with his two swords. There, There's no other mechanics, and there should have been more mechanics. Like, just one, maybe two more mechanics. Somehow. Or phases. Or something that just, like, is something more than what we got. So that was very disappointing. Um, I was also very underwhelmed by Strand at first, but part of Strand is, um, at first with, with Strand, Strand felt very underwhelming, but then, like, I started putting in mods into my armor piece, and so I have some decent, like, this is not, a, like, a good build. I have now seen several other builds better than what I'm rocking, but now... Uh, you know, things are okay. So Strand, Strand is fine. Uh, Hunter Strand is doing the most ridiculous amount of damage right now. Yay, we love that. Um, Warlock uh, Strand is clearing ads like there's no tomorrow. So, like, you can literally, like, clear, like, the seasonal activity that I'm going to be doing here in a moment. Like, if you're a Warlock with the right build, you put on Austria Striga and you have the right build with um, um, Necrotic Grips and you can clear out ads like there's no tomorrow. Um, and t and even Titans, like the Berserker, like totally, totally fine, totally cool. There are builds for all of them. They all are up there. It's not as oppressive as Stasis was. Stasis arrived too hot. Um... But, you know, it is doing well. So I like where Stasis is. It just took me a while to, like, get into it. And even then, like, I haven't been grinding as much as I should because, like, I don't have... I only have, like, two things unlocked. Like, I need to do more of Neo Muna and more activities to unlock... to get the stuff to unlock more of these. But having seen the potential by like, seeing other players on Neo Luna, in other activities. I'm like, man, Strand is dope. Let's go. 
Uh, so strand is good. Uh, quality of life. Like, yeah, the loadouts, dope. Um, now that I know that... Well, sorry, let's uh, rewind. Let's rewind. We'll come back to loadouts. Guardian ranks. Guardian ranks, dumb. I was sold on the fact that this number will tell you, as another player, how much I have done in Destiny. And I thought it was going to be like more of a permanent number. You see this number, you know what steps I have done. Like you can see, oh, I've run raids, I've run this, I've run dungeons, you know. Like I've done these things. And I thought that this was going to be permanent. But it's not. In three months, all of us who get past six, people get seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We all go back to six in three months and we do it again. So not only are you grinding this number, but you're also still grinding this number, your seasonal rank. They wanted to replace seasonal ranks. They didn't want like, oh, I'm, I'm seasonal rank 420, you know, whatever, you know, blaze it. They didn't want the 420 blaze it type shit. They wanted something that's more representative of your experience in the game. But we don't need another number to chase every three months. This should be a cumulative number, not a temporary number. I was excited for this because one, two, three, four, five, this helps new players because I have I have players in my clan who are fairly new. Um, there's some newer people in my clan who don't know what I should do next. And you know, like it's hard. It's a you know we know. Oh yeah, you go to here, you go to your quests, and you check out what what stuff to do. You pick and choose, but not everybody knows that right away. It takes a while to know that this is where you look to see what you're doing next. But everybody knows how to come here. So then, you know, a new light player will see this and be like, oh, I need to complete the new light quest at Guardian Rises. And then boom, oh, now I've got to explore these planets. Cool. And now I've got to do this. And so, like, <clears throat> it moves you along the way. But I wish this was permanent. I wish this was permanent. Like, this is including seasonal stuff for right now. Rather than resetting us, just keep adding on to it. Just keep adding on to it. Like, there's a limit to how much you can get this season. And the next season, it goes a little bit further and a little bit further. Because then you know this person has ran, you know, the raid in Lightfall. You know later this person ran the dungeon next season or whatever the next dungeon is. Like... It should be a number where you can see it and you're like, okay, this person has done quite a bit of stuff. Because raids, dungeons, master, legendary difficulty type stuff gets involved. And this number becomes more representative. But it's not. It's temporary. So I will know for the next few months, like I already saw somebody who's seven. I'm sure there's some people who are already at eight or getting close to eight. Um, I'm sure these are all raid related. Um... Like, you're starting to see these numbers go up, and so you'll understand when you see them for a while. But then, like I said, new season, we're all back to six. And so then Guardian Ranks does not do what I want it to do. So, but it's a, it's a novel try. With the Guardian Ranks, you eventually can unlock more loadout slots. I do kind of wish there was more than ten loadout slots because there's 10 here but the loadouts are fine i appreciate that the loadouts are here in game um these are my current loadouts that i have right now i wish that i had already had these unlocked because like i said the strand build that i have right now is a very poor version of the many strand builds out there there are better ones and so i would like to have them saved but you have to do the Guardian Ranks to get these. I don't know if you can get all these in one season or if this is throughout many seasons. So I thought, uh-oh, Destiny Item Manager, Dim, 
I thought that that was going to be in trouble, but I'm going to keep relying on Dim because Dim allows me to have as many slots without needing to grind this. But still, I'm appreciative of this being in game because that's one less thing that I, I can keep my favorite or most potent builds here and then just rely on Dim for like the less potent ones. Uh, sorry, let me, let me see. Wait, so you'll lose loadout slots? I don't know that. So I don't know if you lose these when it resets. That I don't know because we haven't seen it. There hasn't been anything regarding that. So um, do you lose them once when it resets? I don't know. Hopefully not. Otherwise, that's awful. <laughs> um, the mod customization view here. This is very convenient. This has been probably the best at being able to like just manage all your mods in one spot great touch having the ability to just have you don't have to worry about affinities because before your helmet could be solar and your arms could be void and your chest piece could be arc now just having all the mods there and like hey you get what you get have fun i like it some people have talked about how you know we've got simplicity at the sacrifice of potency some of the more potent mods that we used to have are either nerfed or gone altogether uh i will be hopeful for now i'm gonna give this a couple more seasons but right now you know when we do a lightfall in review i like what we see now this is more accessible to a sense to, to to new guardians and to guardians who have avoided builds in the past. Because you don't have to remember Arc, Solar, Void, and which mods were available to which affinities. You could now just <laughs> equip your, your armor pieces and then look at your mods and then go to town. So I do appreciate that. And I think, and this one, like, I'm still kind of on the fence about, but my current stance right now is I am okay at, with the loss of the potency for the accessibility. I'm always for having more players having access to features in the game or things in the game. And I always enjoy like the theory crafting of how you can like mix and match mods. And so, um, I like that. I like that the artifact mods are just there. They just are there, you know? <laughs> like, you don't have to equip them onto your stuff. They just exist. Great touch. But in that same regard, I enjoyed when I could just unlock everything eventually. If you grind enough, you can unlock everything. And you don't have to worry about resetting your artifact. But now you have to worry about that again. You get 12 things you can unlock. And sure, you can reset it for free, assuming it's not bugged, because right now this feature is bugged for some people. So you do have to pay sometimes. So be mindful. Look to see if there's a cost when you go to reset it. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of, like, when we talk about the quality of life aspects that Lightfall introduced, things that all players get to enjoy at this point, I think that all of that is great so you had a very underwhelming campaign you have a cool new subclass that i think this has been the most strand has been the most fun that i've had period in destiny ever like just being able to grapple and just do dumb things or reach heights that i couldn't reach before or reach speeds that i couldn't reach before like this has been the most fun I personally have had ever. Um, and again, the quality of life stuff, being able to see like the anti-barrier, anti, you know, the unstoppable, like your different champion mod stuff's here. Um, all, all this stuff being here, nice. Being able to see which ones you have active, nice. Guardian rank, not so nice. Uh, loadouts, nice. The mod customization, very nice. So there's like a lot of like you know quality of life stuff that was introduced that I think 
is really nice. Um, so when you add it all up together, and then also, obviously, we got Neptune. So we have a whole new place to enjoy, a whole new place to explore. And I know that some people don't like how empty it feels. It's like, hey, here's a city that existed for a long time, but there's nobody there except for these hologram projectors that represent the citizens of Neomuna. Um, I'm okay with the, the, the lack of people. Like, because you have to think about the choices. So the choices are, because this is the same engine essentially with maybe some behind the scenes upgrades. This is the same engine that Destiny 2 shipped with. So at the launch of Destiny 2, we had the Red War and you did have civilians like her and people kind of showed about the place, at least in the beginning. And so that gave you that, oh, the last citizens of Earth are struggling here as you fight the fight to defend our home. And that was cool, but it doesn't have the same effect of how intense things could be because there wasn't a whole lot of enemies. Whereas here, there's a crap ton of enemies. So there are times that you're just gonna feel overwhelmed in some of these areas. And that's the trade-off. The trade-off is given the engine, you either don't have a lot of enemies and maybe they just throw in a bunch of yellow bar enemies at you, a bunch of like beefy enemies at you, not a lot, but just enough for artificial uh, difficulty. And you see the citizens of Neomuna or the alternative is you don't see the citizens of Neomuna, you don't see NPCs, but you are, everything in the kitchen sink is thrown at you, every corner, every block that you go through in the city. And I know that there's going to be some people out there who's going to say, Por que no los dos? Why not both? Because it can't do it. This game cannot do it. Would I like both? Yes. Can both happen? Clearly, no. If both could happen, both would have happened. It's not a matter of they didn't want to do it. These are lazy devs. No, there's literally a limitation and they hit that limitation. And their choice was, our players love being surrounded by a bajillion enemies. So we're going to throw a bajillion enemies. That's, and not everybody's happy about that, but I am personally happy with that. I sometimes fear for my life on the streets of Neomuna. And I like that. Here's what I'll say about um, the story. Because I've been thinking about for like a week, how would I do the story differently? I mentioned that I wouldn't want Callus killed right away. It would have been better off that Lightfall, we go to Neptune first, and maybe there's some missions of us like in the... Uh, outside lands you know like just some far stretches of the place away from the city where we can't see the city and we're just like man it says it's somewhere around here and then maybe there, there's a fight that you have between you and the cloud striders so again this is before our enemies get there this is before the cabal get there before callus gets there we're just there and we get close and so you have the two cloud striders come in and they fight with you, like Rohan versus you. 1v1 me, nerd. And of course, since you are a light bearer, you have multiple lives to, to give. You kick his ass eventually. Or maybe you don't. <laughs> like, I don't care. Like, I'm not the I'm not I'm not the story writer here. But so you have this confrontation with the Cloud Striders. And then eventually, after you, you know, you, yeah, you, you bump some knuckles, then you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. We're just here because we heard this place existed. We don't mean to come as conquerors. And then like, oh, cool, let's be friends. 
And then Lightfall should have been, the campaign should have been, you with the Cloud Striders fighting the Vex. Because the Vex are already around here. So it should be you versus the Vex with the Cloud Striders. Give you missions that leads up to some whatever Vex boss um, that helps you protect the citizens of Neomuna from this Vex invasion. Now, is it is this what we what the people may want? No, but here's the thing. Long the long con. So Lightfall is purely you and the Cloud Striders versus the Vex. Yay, things are done. Mind you, at the end of last season, Season of the Seraph, we see, we see that the that the witness is on his way. So then, three months after Lightfall, when we get the next season, which right now is Season of the Deep, rather than Season of the Deep, we have Season of Defiance. We have the current season. We have, oh shit, Talos is here. The witness is here. Everything that happened in Lightfall happens next season so we've had three months of time with rohan and nimbus and some of the after campaign stuff where you get to learn more about the cloud Riders happen now and then three months from now the shit we do against callus and his shadow legion happens in season of the defiance so then when rohan does sacrifice himself to to save the people of Niamuna, you're like, damn, I have three months with this guy. Versus, damn, I had four hours with this guy. Like, you you know, like, it's a, it's a, it's a different story when, when he does sacrifice himself. So you have the big space fight back on Earth. The Witness does his thing. Callus goes to Neomuna because remember, we like, Rasputin gives us the data about Neomuna at the end of Season of the Seraph. And you're telling me we didn't do jack shit until the witness came up on our doorsteps and we're like, shit, we gotta go. Come on. So, Lightfall is. You don't call it Lightfall, <laughs> you call it something else. And what we should have got last week was us. And the Cloud Striders against the Vex, both in the city and in the S Skynet. <laughs> it's not Skynet. Whatever the fuck they call their shit. Uh, <laughs> what is this called? Hypernet. <laughs> uh, you you have that, and then we have the Callus arc, and then you do season of of the, of the deep. And then you do whatever you do to help explain the the witness. And then we get the final shape. That's what it should have been. Roughly. I obviously have been workshopping this for a while, and it does obviously need more workshopping still. But that's my rough plot points of how I think it should have gone. So when you ask... What do I think of this expansion? And I say I am whelmed. There is good, but it's hard to like say like it's really hard to sit here and talk about the good quality of life stuff when the campaign stunk, and that's coming off of the heels of one of the best campaigns, the Witch Queen. The Witch Queen was dope. Was a great expansion. So you have great expansion. Followed by worse expansion. Not worse expansion. Um, but you, you come off of a high and you get sobered up so fast. Like, you just drank top shelf liquor. You just smoked, you know, everybody be responsible here. You just smoked the best stuff out there. I, I don't smoke, so I can't. Bear with me. But whatever. You know, the best of the best. You just had it. And then you just get some serious news. So, boom, you're now brought down. That's kind of what uh, Lightfall is. You, you know, we were riding high. We were like, damn, this is great. And now, this. 
Is it worse than Curse of Osiris? No, this is better than Curse of Osiris. Is this the worst expansion period ever? No, because again, Curse of Osiris. <laughs> um, but does this sting more than others? Yes. Because when Curse of Osiris came, Curse of Osiris came right after the Red War. It came right after Destiny 2 launched. So you had a very mid-launch of Destiny 2 where we were excited, but then we were humbled because double primaries and a lot of other reasons. Like, Destiny 2 wasn't what it should have been at launch. So we were meh. Then you get Curse of Osiris where we're like, it's more meh. And then you get um, the Warmind DLC. And you're like, oh, there's hope. And then you get Forsaken. And then you get Beyond Light and all the other expansions afterwards. And so, like, from Forsaken onwards, things have been slowly getting better. Slowly getting better. You're like, ah, like, like, like the bones were being built out. And you're like, oh, wow, like, I can see, I can feel, like, you've been working out. You can, like, feel the change in yourself. You're like, oh, my God, this is getting there. And the Witch Queen comes. And you're like, I have my summer bod. You're like, damn. And then life all comes, and you're like, ah, shit, I let myself go a little bit. You know, got to hope we don't play shirts versus skins on the basketball court. <laughs> so, like, it's just disappointing. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's where I sit. Am I still going to be playing this? 100%. Am I going to put as much time into this as I might have otherwise? Hard to say. The, the campaign doesn't turn me off from the rest of everything else, so... Really, this comes down to my own personal enjoyment and everything else. So, uh, everything else is really to be determined. It's just that, like, it, it, it just, you have to wonder, how did this happen? And that's the question that a lot of people ask, is how did this happen? How did the story end up the way it did? And then, of course, everybody's now nervous and quaking in their boots because we have the final shape that comes out next year. So far, tentatively. So in 2024, we're expected to get the final shape expansion. And so the question becomes, what kind of DLC, what kind of expansion are we going to get when it comes? Who's in charge of the ship? What, are, what kind of quality are we going to get? Because the final shape that comes out in 2024, that is meant to be the end of this saga. The saga that has been playing for 10 years, like literally, like a lot of people made this reference of Infinity War and Endgame. Lightfall that we have right now is Infinity War. The final shape is Endgame. This has been a 10 year thing. You know, I remember the first Iron Man with Tony Stark when, you know, you had Robert Downey Jr. that like, 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 this is a whole lot of time for a lot of people and the difference that we're at right now versus the mcu was infinity war was dope as fuck lightfall not as much and so that leaves you wondering and nervous now knowing that you have uh you know infinity war and endgame you have lightfall the final shape it makes you worried about the final shape now, do I think that the final shape is going to be garbage? No. Do I know that it's not going to be garbage? <laughs> also, no. But I am hopeful. But it does make you question a whole lot more. What are we going to get? Which, three months ago, two weeks ago, we weren't asking this question. Two weeks ago, we were all like, and Lightfall and the Final Shape are going to be dope. There is no questions, no doubt. Coming off of Witch Queen, no doubt. We had questions about the seasonal model that Destiny has, but we had no doubts 
regarding the Lightfall expansion and the Final Shape expansion. So, you, you do have to wonder. And the reason why, well, a reason why so many people are so passionate and there's a lot of angry people and there's a lot of defensive people and there's a lot of everybody out there right now on Twitter, on Reddit, in their own YouTube videos, on their streams here on Twitch or on YouTube or on Facebook gaming. I don't know if that's still a thing. Uh, but like, you have people everywhere in every possible walk of life either slamming Lightfall or defending or a mix of both. Because, again, similar to the MCU leading up to Infinity War and Endgame, there's a lot of people who are invested. There's a lot of people like me, or more than me, who, like, I have thousands of hours in this game. There's countless number of gamers who've been playing this since 2014, who have thousands of hours in Destiny 1 and Destiny 2. So that's why we're so passionate, it's because like we are invested. We are as invested as can be. And there's lots of other games that come out in the last decade that would love a similar passion to what the Destiny, the Destiny community is. And for better or for worse, this is what we are. We are just very passionate. And that passion gets expressed in very many, very many different ways. Sometimes it's very constructive, methodical uh, presentation. You know, think Datto on YouTube and Twitch. And sometimes, you know, you can have the, the spirited emotional responses, which not to say that's bad or whatever, but like, again, it's just a different take. And so it's more charged. And so you can think of somebody who I've been watching a lot lately, Astacross, who he does kind of just wear it on his sleeve. Like, you know what he's thinking because he's going to let you know. And there's even more vocal people out there that we may or may not know. And that's just, you know, all the different people in the community. And together we make the community. For better or for worse, with the good times and the bad, this is what and who we are. And there are times that I'm embarrassed. But, you know, again, we are all just invested. We are all people who want the best. That's why we still keep coming back. Some people say they're going to quit. Some people do quit. Some people don't quit. But the people who are still here, we just want the best. And I just want the best because I would hate to say that I spent thousands of hours on a game that didn't stick the landing. Especially after they showed that they could stick the landing. So, this expansion was what it was. It's so like when I say I whelmed again, that's that's what I got. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Let's do this then. I don't know how long that rant went for.